Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Young with Optrix Engineering. And of course, I have Sean Sturby, our Technical Services Manager. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Scott. This is another edition of the Optrix Insider. We have two topics today. The first one is Wi-Fi frag attacks. And the second one is Internet Explorer has an end of life. So if you are using Internet Explorer, you'll certainly want to hear about that. Let's start with Wi-Fi frag attacks. What are they? I've never heard of them before. It stands for fragmentation attacks because the attacks all involve wireless and telling the router that you have that uh, the frames are fragmented or here's an additional frame that you should add into an existing frame. What this basically does is it's going to allow malicious people that are within radio range of your Wi-Fi to inject frames of their choice onto the network, even if it is protected with encryption. What do you mean by a frame? I don't think I've heard of that in, in terms of a Wi-Fi before. Yeah, every network protocol stack breaks things down. So, you know, we're, we're used to going out and we hit a browser, go type in a name, and that's at layer seven. That's the application layer. But as it breaks it down and, and says, oh, I have to make a decision and I have to then send it on to some physical medium like wireless, it might not be able to send the entire page to you in one chunk. So it has to fragment it or break it into much smaller chunks. And then your computer, when it receives those chunks, has to aggregate them or put them back together and then hand them up to the la layer above. And eventually it'll get to your browser and the browser will go, oh, here's a full and complete web page with all of the images all put together nice and tidy. Sounds like teleportation. A little bit, yeah. You break things down into smaller chunks and then yeah. bring them back together. Uh, rehydrate them. Uh, the fragmentation attacks are nasty because by being able to inject a packet of any sort or a frame onto your network, your wireless, they can do nasty, nasty things like one of the demonstrated attacks change the DNS server on the client devices, on other client devices. It just popped up and said, hey, Mr. Network, uh, we have a new DNS server over here. And the DNS server is under control of the malicious people. So you go to a site that you go to all the time. And what you think is your site or the site that you want to go to turns out to be a watering hole attack. They've created a clone of that page and there's some bad code on it. So this is very bad. You would think that, you know, my wireless is encrypted Therefore, everything should be safe. And it's not. Uh, I know we've been strongly recommending that when people set up wireless, if they can, set it up so that the, the wireless is basically like an ISP or an internet provider. It's guest only and it's external to your network. So it's considered no different than any other remote network. And if somebody wants to get on the Wi-Fi to get out to the internet, that's fine, they can. If they want to get on the Wi-Fi so that they can get access to internal resources, well, how would they get onto those same internal resources if they were at home? They'd have to VPN in or use a remote access of some sort. Treat the local wi wireless the same way. It's an untrusted network because you cannot physically secure it. It's wireless, it goes through the walls. That's a yeah, really good point. And certainly that's the way it's set up here is if you want to get onto the Wi-Fi, this is more of a convenience than anything. So it's a separate segment doesn't uh, from our network and doesn't uh, talk to it. So yeah, I think that's a really good point. You also brought up an interesting term I hadn't heard of uh, before, which was a watering hole attack. And I guess that's kind of like a phishing attack in terms of the destination, is it it's a website that looks like where you're expected to go, but it's not, and it might even behave the same way, depending on how they have the back, up, back end set up? Correct, yes. Uh, and then they get you into a funnel where you do whatever it is that they want you to do thinking you're somewhere else. Right. You're going to your typical news site 
or what you think is, and all the current news is there on the site that you that appears on your computer, but the malicious actor is in control of it. They've proxied most of the content, but I've also injected content that goes and you know leaks information about your browser or actually tells your computer to run uh, remote access Trojan. So now they have access to your computer. Hmm. Wow, this Wi-Fi frag attacks is definitely sneaky. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add on that? Uh, again, this is one of those uh, vulnerabilities where they've gone to the expense of creating a website and a, a logo for it. So go to fragattacks.com. The, what's the solution? The ultimate solution is don't uh, trust wireless, but we, since we all use and love wireless, make sure that your devices are updated. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's thanks for letting us know about that for sure. Our second and last topic is Internet Explorer has an end of life. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. We're going to have a funeral for Internet Explorer 11. Uh, Microsoft has revealed that as of June 15th, 2022, so just slightly over a year from now, the desktop application IE11 will be retired. They've been getting ready for this for a long time. Uh, they've been making sure that everybody who has a current version of Windows has their new Microsoft Edge browser. And since Microsoft Edge is built on the Chromium project, which is the open source version of the Chrome browser, you know, it is uh, quite a nice browser in that it has support for all of the current standards. That was one of the big problems with the old Internet Explorer was that it was behind the times when it came to supporting the absolute latest standards. Now, people are going to say, but, 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 I need IE11 to run site X, or I have an active X control that only runs in IE11. Well, what Microsoft has done is in Microsoft Edge, they've given it dual engine support. If you need to, you can mark a particular website as a legacy site, and it will use the old engine, which still has all the same Internet Explorer quirks and ability to run ActiveX controls. But for every other website, it's going to use the Chromium engine so that you get the best experience. I would imagine web designers are going to rejoice because Internet Explorer was always the one site, as, as I recall, where your site looked great on all the other browsers except for Internet Explorer, and there was something you had to fix. And and it, <laughs> and it was ultimately there was like one or two people that visited your website that complained the most about something not working, when uh, you had hundreds or thousands of other people using other more modern browsers. And so the question was, should I even bother <laughs> fixing this for the one or two people that visit my site? But uh, I remember having many conversations with our web developer locally and uh, making sure that he had every single browser possible out there. And it even got worse because of uh, people's browsing websites on cell phones and tablets right. and, and non Windows desktops and needing access to all of those browser engines as well. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so bottom line is if you are using Internet Explorer as your main browser, time to switch. There's Edge, there's Firefox, there's Chrome, there's Brave, there's lots of other options out right. there as well. Great. Anything else you'd like to add to this conversation today there, Sean? Not on these two topics specifically, but I saw a t-shirt here over the weekend and it was uh, somebody from Lawrence Systems who said, I think teaching Sand how to think might have been a problem. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, today we talked about Wi-Fi frag attacks, and we'll include a, a link to a, the website where you can learn more about that. And of course, Internet Explorer has an end of life of June 2022. So you do have time, a year, just over a year to do it, but time to switch now, I would say. Get used to, to something new. Right on. Well, thanks, Sean. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, share, and subscribe to it, and leave a comment. We'd love to see those. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great week. Bye for now.
Bye.